this is going to be solving quadratic inequalities by square roots and I already have solving inequalities by factoring and then also solving inequalities by quadratic quadratic inequalities by the quadratic formula so this is a three-part thing that's what I'm saying okay you should have notes uh-huh um, and you should be taking notes and make sure that this is not a spectator sport for you because I know what I'm doing. You need to know what you're doing. Let's go. Math with Miss B. Math with Miss B. There's a thousand other places that you'd rather be. But you're watching Math with Miss B. Solving by square root. So if I have a quadratic that does not have a linear term, linear being not an x squared, not a constant, but just an x, right? Then I can solve by square roots. So the first thing you wanna do is isolate x. So you wanna solve the equation like a normal equation. So we're gonna subtract 14 from both sides. And when I subtract 14 from both sides, I'm gonna get two plus 14 is 16. So I get x squared is greater than or equal to 16. So to get x by itself, I need to get rid of the little squared thing. So that means that I square root it. Doo -doo. And so x is greater than or equal to plus or minus 4. Don't forget your plus or minus. It is very important that when you take the square root of both sides of an equation, you always get a plus or minus. And what is also helpful to know is that when you are solving a quadratic, usually a quadratic has two answers. So that's why I did a plus and a minus, because a quadratic usually has two answers. Sometimes it don't. Sometimes it don't. Okay? But just know that's helpful to help you remember okay so I'm gonna do x is greater than 4 and then x is greater than or equal to negative 4 x is greater than 4 so here we go negative 6 negative 4 negative 2 0 so again on this number line I skipped by twos so that I could fit all my numbers on the number line my symbols are greater than or equal to symbols so that's why I'm using closed circles I'm going to use different colors to show you different areas of our number line. And each area of your number line, you need to choose a point in each area of your number line. So for the first one, I'm gonna use negative six. I'm gonna plug it into my original equation and I'm gonna simplify using PEMDAS, baby! If this is the first video that you're watching in the little in quadratic inequality series, I don't do the PEMDAS for you because you should know the PEMDAS, okay? Um, but you need to decide is that a true statement or is it a false statement in this case? Uh, the blue area is true. So that means the blue area is going to be part of my solution Now for the purple area. I'm choosing zero and I'm going to plug zero into my original equation. I Get negative 14 is greater than or equal to 2 that is false So the purple area is not going to be part of my solution now for the orange area. I'm going to plug in 6 This is true so when I plug in 6 that means that the orange area is going to be part of my solution so what does that look like swoop swoop I'm in the blue area and the orange area because they were true when I plugged in a point so my solution in set notation looks like negative infinity to negative 4 bracket bracket because there's an equal to in the inequality symbol comma I mean not comma in union with bracket four comma positive infinity close parentheses okay see how that works yes honey okay so that is example numero uno in a nutshell let's do example number two example number two two okay so i'm solving my square roots i need to isolate x so i'm getting x by itself when I get x by itself, I want to move that negative 9 to the other side, so obviously I'm going to add 9 to both sides. That's going to leave me with 4x squared is greater than or equal to 9. And now I need to get rid of that 4. So I'm going to divide both sides by 4, and I'm going to get 9 over 4. I'm going to leave it as a fraction for now, people. I know y'all don't be liking fractions, but I promise it'll be better if we leave it as a fraction, okay? Remember that you want to take the square root of both sides because x squared to get rid of that squared I have to take the square root That's how you inverse that exponent, right? 
So I'm gonna take the square root of x squared, take the square root of nine over four. And now you're like, oh my gosh, how do you take the square root of a fraction? Well, if the top number is a perfect square and nine is, the bottom number is a perfect square and four is, what's the square root of nine? Three, what's the square root of four? Two, don't forget your plus or minus. X is greater than or equal to plus or minus three over two. And we all know that three over two is really what? 1.5, negative 1.5, okay? So those are the two answers that I'm gonna use for the number line. So I'm gonna get X is greater than or equal to negative 1.5, X is greater than or equal to 1.5. What kind of circle should I use, guys? Should I use an open circle or should I use a closed circle? Closed, good job. So here's my number line. I'm gonna go in between the negative one and the negative two because that is where 1.5 should be, negative 1.5. And I'm gonna go in between the positive one and the positive two because that is where the 1.5 should be. Um, so now I'm gonna show you different areas of the graph. So I did the blue area, the purple area, and the orange slash yellow area depends on you know what you're looking at, what colors the screen, how the colors are coming up on the screen. Okay, and I'm gonna pick a point from each area of the graph. So from the blue area, I'm gonna pick the negative two. Uh, uh huh. And so I'm gonna plug it into the function. Not the function, the inequality. Excuse me. Uh, and I'm gonna get seven is greater than zero. Is that true or false? It is true. So the blue area is gonna be part of my solution. So now, I'm gonna pick from the purple area, I'm gonna choose the zero. Anytime there's a zero in your test area, pick the zero. So when I plug that in, I'm gonna get negative nine is greater than zero. Is that true or false? False. So the purple area is not part of our solution. And then for the orange area, I'm gonna pick a four. And when I pick that four, I get 55 is greater than or equal to zero. Is that true or false? That is true. So now I have my solutions. Negative infinity to negative 1.5, bracket because I have an equal to in my symbol, and then positive 1.5 all the way to positive infinity, but bracket on the 1.5 because there's an equal to on my symbol, okay? And then infinities always get parentheses on the ends because it's not a fixed value. Y'all doing good, y'all doing good. Okay, one more, one more. 2x squared minus 10 is less than 20. This one's not gonna come out pretty. I just want you guys to know it's gonna come out some, some ugly decimal, all right? Uh, if you're feeling confident, pause the video. Try this one on your own, okay, okay, okay? So isolating x means I'm gonna add 10 to both sides of the equation and I'm gonna get 2x squared is less than 30. I'm gonna divide both sides by two. So I'm gonna get x squared is less than 15. And you have to remember to square root both sides. Hey now. Don't forget your plus or minus. So when you take the square root of 15, it comes out to approximately 3.87, okay? I just rounded to the nearest hundredths place, but the decimal is very, very long, goes on forever, no pattern, doesn't repeat, because it's irrational. That's just a side note. <laughs> so I'm gonna take those two numbers, the plus, the positive 3.87 and the negative 3.87, and those will be my solutions. So X is le less than negative 3.87, pay attention to that symbol, X is less than 3.87. So what kind of circle does that mean that we are going to use? An open circle, of course. So with the open circle, that's the same thing as parentheses, right? I can use the parentheses on the number line or I can use open circles or closed circles on the, on the number line. And I'm gonna denote each area with the colors, so blue area, purple area, orange area. And we're gonna choose something from each area. So first I chose negative four in the blue area. 22 is less than 20. False! 
I'm going to choose 0 from the purple area. Negative 10 is less than 20. True. And then, of course, I'm going to pick 4 from the orange area. 22 is less than 20. False. So I know that the only area I'm going to use is the purple area. And my solution should look like negative 3.8 comma 3.8 parentheses on both sides because I had less than symbols. I did not have equal twos on them. So parentheses all around. Okay. This is the second part of a three part I did. So there are two other parts to this little quadratic inequality thing. I did quadratic inequalities by factoring and also quadratic inequalities by the quadratic formula and this video with quadratic inequalities by square roots. I say this all the time and I will uh, keep saying it. Go back through the video. See if you can do the problems without my help. And if not, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.